Greetings this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning in to Notes for the Morning. We are involved in the step of commencement. That is, we're involved in engaging the enemy. And since January, we have noted our resolve for 2024 is that we increase in holiness or in our spiritual health toward God. We looked at many things since January, February, March, April, and now we're in May. In May, the primary focus is on the posture of offense. And so when we are in the offense mode, that means we are commencing, we are doers of the Word of God. So we noted the steps of being a doer of the Word of God. Secondly, to stand and thirdly, to walk in the Spirit, and fourthly, to run the race. Now we have come to a different step, and it is step five. And what we want to do here is that we want to talk about walking in the body of Christ. And we want to use as our text Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17 through verse 24. I must state at the beginning of this, what we are doing is going through the steps of the good soldier of Jesus Christ as he engages the enemy. And so we're talking about the movement actually of the house of God, which is, a, which is spiritual in this physical world that we live in. We are not going to look at verse 16, but verse 16 gives you the nature of the body of of Christ. And so as a part of the body of Christ, we that are believers in Jesus Christ, and we that have been baptized into the body of Christ, we need to know how we are to walk in that framework, in that spiritual body, in the kingdom of God as an individual believer. Now there are two parts to that. There is a personal walk and that's found in verse 17 through 24. And then there is a walk that we're to have to one another. And so we are battling with a spiritual battle. And we must understand that. The battlefield is in the mind. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So the battle is spiritual. God is not commanding his children to take up physical weapons. We're not in a physical warfare, but a spiritual warfare between the new man and the old man. Whether we want it or not, the old man remains in our flesh. Paul makes this very clear in Romans chapter 7, verse 14 through 24. The things I do, I would not. The things I do not, I would, because sin dwelleth in my flesh. As stated many times, our pattern for our walk in this warfare is the walk of Jesus Christ. He walked in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, walked in submission to the Father, and he walked in things that were pleasing to the Father. And so today, we come to the fifth step, the walk in the body of Christ. Let's just focus on the personal walk, and first thing we note is the negative. In verse 17 and 18 and 19, Paul gives us what we're not to do as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. He said we're not to walk as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind or in the uselessness of their mind. No profit. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness are all manner of evil, that is to work all uncleanness. 
And so Paul was saying, we're not to walk as the unbeliever. We're not to walk as the man that is dead in trespasses in sins. And he gives the positive, the reason we're not. In verse 20, but you have not so learned Christ. He said, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. So Paul is describing the new man. Paul is describing and defining to the members of the body of Christ there in Ephesus that they have heard Christ. They heard him spiritually. He has given them ears to hear. That is, he's given them the Holy Spirit of God. For we we can know nothing about God outside of having the Spirit of truth dwelling in us. That process happens as God comes to live in us We call it regeneration, born from above. There are many terms for that. We've been quickened. We've been raised from death unto eternal life. So Paul said, you have heard and you have been taught by God. So what is going to be your personal walk? He makes it very plain in verse 22. We're to put off something and we're to put on something. Verse 22, we're to put off concerning the former conversation. That is our old manner of life. When we walk in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. For he said, the old man, that's the former conversation, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. And so before we were born from above, before God came to live in us, before we received the gift of faith, before we were given the gift of repentance, before we were brought, and taught of who Jesus Christ is, our Savior, our substitute, and our sacrifice, then we lived, we were ruled by the old man that was corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Paul then says, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So that is be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God, Romans 12 And verse 2, the only way we can be renewed in the spirit of our mind is for the Holy Spirit of God to do that work in us. And so we that are submissive to the leadership of the Spirit of God on a daily basis, we are being renewed as the Word is being applied to us by the Spirit of God. And then he said we're to put on something, and that ye put on the new man, which after God, now listen carefully, is created in righteousness and true holiness. And so our personal walk inside of the body of Christ as just individual believers, our personal behavior in the body of Christ is to be one that is putting off daily the old man. That is a process of mortifying the deeds of of this body. Paul is very plain in the book of Colossians about this put off procedure of the old man. In Colossians 3 and 5, he says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inornate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience into which you also walked some time when you lived in them. But now you have put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you put off the old man with his deeds. So what we are doing this morning, we are looking at the idea and the prospect of how we personally are to behave as one member of the family of God or the body of Christ. How do we act as a citizen of the kingdom of God? Well, how we act is we put off the old man, we be renewed in the spirit of our mind, and we put on the new man. The apostle said in Colossians 3.10, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So what Paul is talking about, we have been given a new creation. Hallelujah. We have been made a new person in Christ. 
Our will has been changed. Our ideas have been changed. Now we love God above ourselves. Paul again explains this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are, have become new. And so when we think about our behavior, and personally in the body of Christ, when we as good soldiers of Jesus Christ engage in the enemy, in the battle with the enemy, the old man, we got to know and identify the old man is lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. He is not with God. He is antichrist. The old man hates God. He hates the ways of God. He does not love God. And so that's what he tries to do is trip us up. He wants to regain rulership in us once again. Well, our time is come and gone. So it's time to pray. I pray that God has spoken something to you that would cause you to examine yourself and your personal behavior since you are a believer and not act like that you're not a believer. We don't need to be a part of those that are non-believers. That's why Paul said, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. We are not part of the system of Belial or of evil. We cannot have fellowship with unrighteousness. Darkness and light cannot cohabitate together. And so we are children of the light. So help us, O oh God, in this battle that we're in to understand our personal walk, how we're to walk in the body of Christ. Father, we thank you for this day. We pray you apply these lessons to the hearers. We pray, O oh God, for strength today we pray, God, for illumination, wisdom, and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ in how we prepare and how we engage the enemy in this battle that's in our mind. We are overcomers in Jesus Christ. So, Father, thank you today. Be with each of us on our journey today as we prepare to walk in this world. Help us to have on the right armor have our mind and have the right attitude and fight this war in the power of God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.